Hey, everybody, I'm Morgan Moore, and thanks for joining us for what I'm calling a mini episode of Answering the Call. You know, we have a lot of awesome employees here at OEMC, and sometimes you just need to brag about them, right? Our staff here does life-saving work, so I wanted to talk with FCO1 Amanda Gar about a call she took that saved a man's life and actually connected back to her own family. Take a listen. I received a 911 call and the woman on the phone stated that she believes that her friend was having a stroke and she said they're on the ground not responding, they're not really breathing. So immediately I'm like, all right, what is the address here? Um, Got all of that information and then started the chest compressions. So we did that. Um, They were, they asked questions when they didn't understand precisely how to do it. Um, At first there was some confusion on whether or not you're doing compressions every 10 seconds. So then I had to clarify, no, it's like push, 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 push. But I mean, they sat there, they counted with me, they immediately started it. Uh, we did CPR up until the point when the, um, uh, the fire department arrived and took over. And that was really it. I mean, it was, they were very much on top of it with me, which really, really helped out as well. That is a huge role that you are playing in the person that is calling 911. All that, those questions that we're asking, all of that information that we're giving you, the instructions that we're providing you, that helps everybody out in the long run. You have no idea how many times that these people then arrive at the hospitals and the nurses are like, oh, thank goodness. I've had people call up and say, thank you so much. Like I, um, I listened to exactly what you said as far as making sure that the baby didn't fall asleep after they fell and hit their head or didn't give them anything to eat or drink and they were able to then do tests in which they wouldn't have been able to do if I allowed them to do that beforehand. So you being that person there that is kind of running that situation until more help arrives, is it, it is so important, that role. I have uh, four generations of um, people with CFD, if you include me being on the fire side here. Um, my great-grandfather, my grandfather, my father, he's currently still on the job. We are my uncles. I mean, we are all in the fire department in some aspect. Um, so this gentleman actually was a, he's a retired lieutenant from Engine 109, which is where my dad is currently stationed as Battalion 14. That's their headquarters. So he is the battalion chief there currently. My grandfather also knew him. They're about the same age range. Um, My grandfather was around the area as well at different firehouses. It's just one of those things where you never really know who you're talking to on the phone or who you're helping out, you know? I do the same thing every single time. There wasn't anything particularly special, I would say, about the way that I performed this call versus any other call. Um, The outcome of it, makes it special. (laughs) Very grateful and thankful for all the help from both the police side, you know, the fire side, everybody out in the field and the family members. I just, I'm incredibly grateful to that as well. Thanks, Amanda. You never really know who's on the other end of that call. And thank you guys for listening. Like always, you can find every episode of Answering the Call on our YouTube page. And don't forget to download the OEMC app. It's got everything you need to stay prepared and see what's going on here at OEMC.